Korea currently has not one, not two, but three age counting methods. The new Yoon Song Yeol administration has vowed to unify all these age counting methods into one and to make this happen as early as next year. And most young Koreans seem to support this idea. 행정 서비스를 받거나 각종 계약을 체결 또는 해석할 때 나이 계산에 대한 혼선 분쟁이 지속되어 from a visitor's perspective, Korea's unusual relationship with age can be pretty confusing. Even before you get onto the different counting systems, the way Koreans use age is quite different from a lot of other countries. In most countries, asking somebody how old they are can come across as pretty rude. But in Korea, it's often one of the very first questions you ask because age directly relates to social standing. And only by knowing each other's ages do we know how we can address each other. With that being the case, Koreans have no choice but to be sensitive to how we count age. So what are the three different age counting systems? The first method is a so-called Korean age system, where an individual turns one on the day they are born and gets one year older on the first day of every new calendar year. This method was adopted by other Asian countries like China and Japan, but Korea is the only one that is currently still using this system today. Although it's unclear exactly where the tradition comes from, a common explanation is that the time inside your mother's womb is considered the first year of your life. The second method used by Koreans is the globally recognized international system and is often used for legal or official matters. Through this method, age is calculated based on an individual's birthday and the first birthday is celebrated one full year after birth. The last method calculates age by the year of birth regardless of the month. So people turn a year older at the beginning of each year like the first method, but counting starts from zero like the international age system. This method was adopted for administrative efficiency by grouping people simply by the year they were born in. So based on these three different methods, boy band BTS member Jungkook, born on September 1st, 1997, today could be 26 by Korean age, 24 by international age, but 25 for administrative reasons. Okay, so if you're confused, you're not alone. Having three different ways to count one's age, Koreans are often left confused as to what age they should use when they introduce themselves to others. When the government announced a slew of plans for COVID-19 vaccination and social distancing measures targeting people in different age brackets last year, many people were confused because the age counting system most commonly used by Koreans didn't line up with the method used by the government. But even if Korea was to accept a different age counting system, there's a big obstacle that gets in the way. The Korean language itself reflects a Confucius culture rooted in Korea, and this is the reason why age is directly related to one's social standing. The language makes it impossible not to consider age or status when communicating with each other. For example, there is a different set of words and phrases that are used when speaking to people who are your seniors or those who are older than you, also known as 존댓말. There are also specific titles, such as 오빠, 형, 언니, or 누나, used to address friends or family that are older. So unless a hierarchy can be easily determined by one's job or title, age is the ultimate determining factor. So if Koreans use the international age system, technically they would need to know the birthdays of every one of their peers to know what kind of language to use. Currently, you only need to know the birth year, and if somebody is born the same year as you, you can forget the whole system because you know you're equal. But despite these cultural barriers, a growing number of Koreans are calling for a change. According to a survey by market research firm Hanguk Research held in December last year on 1,000 Koreans, 71% of them thought that the country should only use international age and stop using Korean age. As for the reasons as to why they want to change, 53% of respondents said that they wanted to reduce confusion and administrative costs. So if Korea really does adapt a universal age counting system, analysts say that in the long run, it would bring the administrative costs down after a few years of confusion. This is also the UN administration's major grounds for pushing this change. However, whether Koreans' tendency to try and sort out social ranks will change accordingly is another question we must address. If you want to know more about the Korean age counting system and the social dilemma behind it, please click the link in the description box below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next episode of Why. Goodbye!